Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. We're continuing on our classroom series with the very last lesson. This will be lesson number eight. You can find this lesson and other lessons over at scrollsawvillage.com. I look for the Village University logo or the forum, I should say, and you'll find uh, some of these videos, uh, written out instruction, downloadable source material, and of course classroom discussion where you could have all your questions answered. So this is lesson eight. This is, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the finishing touches. And this is actually kind of a, a quick little lesson because there's really not a whole lot to talk about. Up to this point, you should have uh, uh, been able to uh, work on your uh, base pattern and clean up the image and uh, make your decisions uh, about what remains in the pattern and what goes. So. Uh, yesterday I ended up recording a uh, demonstration on how I went about uh, creating uh, my pattern of William Shatner and uh, this is kind of what I came up with you could uh, check out the video and uh, see exactly how I got to this point uh, your your interpretation may be a little bit different uh, or it may be a lot different uh, because each one of us uh, approaches these things a little bit different and uh, there really is no right or wrong way to do uh, portrait patterns. Um, uh, we all kind of start off from a base pattern and uh, we make a lot of decisions that really shape the overall pattern. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, real quick uh, checking your work. Uh, usually after I uh, finish a pattern what I'll do is I'll go ahead and print that. Uh, you could do that uh, real easy. Just uh, come up to file uh, print uh, just like you would print any other document uh, print it out uh, one thing you can do uh, let me show you a little trick to just save a little bit of ink um, if we hide all of these other layers so only the background layer and your pattern layer is visible you could uh, highlight your pattern layer and you could drop down the opacity so that it well just kinda of prints out in a light gray uh, that way it saves yourself a little bit of uh, uh, ink in your ink cartridge and uh, won't be so taxing on your uh, on your printer uh, because that ink does get uh, a little bit expensive after a while and uh, after you've uh, printed it out just go ahead and bump the opacity up so that uh, it's black once again so that's a little tip to save you a little bit of money on ink uh, but uh, usually I end up printing out a copy of the pattern uh, the exact size that I intend to cut it and what I'll do is I'll, I'll grab like a uh, a red pen and I'll go through it and I'll just circle little areas that I think uh, might uh, be a little bit difficult to cut so let's say um, well let's kind of zoom in here maybe uh, something like this little uh, uh, peninsula here or right here might be a little bit too tight you know so uh, I'll go ahead and circle something like that uh, with my red pen and I'll just kind of go through the entire pattern looking for areas that uh, I need to thicken up the bridges or remove uh, certain peninsulas or uh, find any other problem areas that I might have and then I'll come back and I'll uh, fix it in the pattern and I do this a couple of times I'll print it out two or three times before I'm satisfied with uh, the way it turns out uh, and uh, once you're satisfied with the way it turns out um, you're just about ready to uh, to go ahead and print let me uh, show you a quick little trick uh, one thing that we try to avoid are islands uh, we talked about uh, how islands uh, become a problem because once you cut around an entire uh, piece of wood it's just gonna fall out and fall to your shop floor and um, one of the unique things about scroll saw patterns is that uh, all the pieces uh, support uh, everything else. So we try to avoid islands as much as possible. Uh, one way to check to see if you have islands or not, uh, we'll bring over our toolbox and right over here is the little fill bucket. So we'll make sure that our pattern layer is selected, grab the fill bucket and just fill this in. And if it looks like everything more or less turns black, uh, you know that uh, everything is okay in your pattern and uh, your 
ready to export it. And uh, to undo that, just uh, either come up to uh, Edit, Undo, or you have the Undo palette right here, or Control Z will undo all that. But that little uh, paint bucket trick is actually really kind of nice because you could immediately see if there's any islands uh, that you have to deal with and add bridges to. So that's a really nice little function there. So go ahead and go through your pattern with a fine tooth comb. Uh, look at all those little uh, uh, lakes and peninsulas and make sure that uh, everything is supported with one another. Uh, maybe if one of those peninsulas is a little bit too long and uh, maybe it needs to uh, have a bridge somewhere else just to add a little extra support for when you're cutting and handling the actual project. So just go through with a red pen, circle everything that uh, will pose a problem and uh, then go back to your pattern and fix those problems. Uh, and once we're done, uh, you pretty much just print it out and uh, glue it to your, uh, your material that you're wanting to saw and uh, just go at it. Uh, oftentimes though, uh, pattern designers will want to share the patterns with the rest of us um, and share their talents and uh, you could do that real easy. We're going to just go ahead and save it as a JPEG. A lot of forms will allow you to attach uh, JPEGs to the uh, individual posts. Uh, Scroll Saw Village does have a pattern library which is basically a gallery format uh, where you could upload uh, patterns and, uh, and you may want to uh, uh, share your pattern with the rest of us and uh, the way to do that just come up here to file Go to Save As, and it's going to pop up a nice little dialog box. And what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, name this. I'm going to just call it Bill. And uh, I'm going to save it to my desktop. And uh, if you click this little area down here, it says uh, Select File Type by extension. Click that, and uh, it's going to pop up or open up a little bit more options here. And you can scroll down and look for JPEG. JPEG is probably the most common way to distribute patterns. Uh, so go ahead and select JPEG and uh, you notice when you select that up here uh, it adds the JPEG extension. Now alternatively let me go ahead and click, click cancel. Alternatively if you go to file save as you could also just uh, highlight the entire name up here and we'll just call it bill.jpg and uh, GIMP is smart enough to know that if you put the extension JPG uh, to know to export it as a JPEG. So I'm just going to go ahead and click return or uh, save. So let me move this up so we can all see it. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And what it's going to do is going to pop up a nice little dialog box. And it says uh, uh, basically uh, before it needs to be exported uh, the JPEGs can't handle transparent layers. We talked about transparent layers before. Uh, but basically what it's going to do is wants to flatten the image so that there aren't multiple layers. It's just one layer of your image and that's it. Uh, this is what we want. So just click export. And it's going to pop up another dialog box. Uh, this is kind of a quality setting. Uh, it usually defaults to 85% uh, and uh, that's usually more than enough. Uh, you could go 100% but then it just gets too big of a file so 85 is just fine and I think that's probably what most people use. You do have a few advanced options down here. Um, quite honestly I really wouldn't uh, worry about it. It tends to get a little complicated with some of these um, but uh, just keep it at the default 85% and just click save and just like that it saves it to your desktop. Now here's a little tricky little thing that I really don't like about GIMP. Now that this is saved as a JPEG, uh, you can see it's right here called Build JPEG. Uh, when you close this out, it's going to think that uh, it's going to save it as a JPEG. And we don't want to save it as a JPEG, we want to save it as a, um, a GIMP document. So you're going to have to come down here and uh, come to Save As, and then uh, choose your extension. Right there is the XCF image and then click save again. Actually we'll just look for our William Shatner original and I'm just going to select that and click save and then uh, 
it'll ask you if you want to replace it. Just go ahead and say yes. And then uh, now you're you're back to your document. Now this is one feature that I really don't like about GIMP. Uh, things like Photoshop, it will treat the export as an export or a save as, and uh, it'll export the image just fine. But when you're ready to close out, it still wants to save it as uh, uh, a PSD, which is a Photoshop format. Um, Hopefully GIMP will actually figure that out in the near future and uh, future uh, revi revisions of the software will have that feature included. Uh, so that's basically how you save a uh, your pattern as a JPEG and you could go ahead and upload it to uh, whichever scroll saw community you belong to. Uh, if you're so kind to share some of your talent with the rest of us, uh, the folks over at Scrollsaw Village uh, would uh, really appreciate any uh, patterns that you be willing to donate. You know, we're very grateful and we're very appreciative of all the designers out there. And, uh, and it really is kind of fun to uh, see um, your designs cut by other people and uh, you might even want to try to fulfill a few requests you know sometimes people will come on there and say you know uh, I would like a, uh, a portrait done of uh, uh, my grandfather that just passed away you know and uh, it's really nice to be able to uh, step in step up to that and uh, uh, fulfill that request and uh, it really makes you feel good and they're very appreciative and uh, you really kind of help give back to the scrolling community so that's real nice and uh, uh, well that's about it uh, I hope you enjoyed this series I had a lot of fun uh, working on it it was it was a lot of work but it was a lot of fun at the same time so I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that and I hope you learned some things um, don't get discouraged doing this stuff uh, go through it stick with it because uh, uh, you know your first couple of patterns you know it might not turn out as well as you had hoped but uh, if you stick with it uh, it becomes very natural and you'll be able to create uh, your own your own sense of style and your own uh, techniques of creating scroll saw portrait patterns and it really does add a completely new dimension to the scrolling hobby so I really encourage each and every one of you to kind of stick with it and just have a good time with it. These are your patterns. Uh, you, you don't have to impress anybody else. If you're happy with them, you know, great. You know, that's awesome. Uh, but uh, I think you'll find that once you start scroll, uh, designing a couple of patterns, you'll be, you'll be designing a couple of more. And before you know it, you're a pattern designer. So I hope to see some of your patterns uh, floating around on the internet and. Um, and uh, have, just have a great time with it. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. This is the last class. You won't see any more, but uh, you could ask questions uh, in this in any of the uh, lessons. Uh, if you get stuck, uh, uh, we're not closing up the class. We're not locking up the class. It's going to be there indefinitely. So people could come and go as they please. And uh, so feel free to ask questions if you run into problems because you know I'll be around and uh, there's plenty of other members that have gone through this class that will be able to answer your questions as well uh, and after you get the uh, picture done of your uh, William Shatner here why don't you go ahead and post that to the forum we would uh, love to see your work uh, you could get a little bit of feedback if you're interested and uh, it would be kind of interesting to see uh, how different artists approach the same picture and uh, it'll be kind of fun to see uh, if you're not a member of Scrollsaw Village, I encourage you to do so. There's a lot of friendly and talented folks over there. Uh, we all have a pretty good time, and um, we'd really love to have you. And uh, just swing on by, uh, join up. Uh, registration is free. Everything is free on the, that website, so uh, uh, swing on by. We also have a really nice pattern library. Uh, at, to date, we have probably about, oh, I don't know, 250 patterns maybe available for download. Uh, we're continuing to add to it. I also encourage you to swing by scrollsawgoodies.com. Uh, Scrollsaw Goodies is uh, kind of the blog that I run and uh, there's a lot of great tips, tutorials, tricks, and um, you know free scrollsaw patterns that uh, I've run across across the web. Uh, so 
go ahead and check that out. Uh, this video series has been produced in conjunction with Scroll Saw Goodies and Scroll Saw Village alike. And uh, the classroom is held over at Scroll Saw Village and uh, the RSS feeds are being held over at Scroll Saw Goodies. So swing on by, take a look, say hi, and uh, well, let's call her good. So until next time, happy scrolling.